two, one. Welcome back, guys. My name is Frankie Figs, and welcome to the first ever Crooked Mouth podcast, where we talk about everything and all the things that need to be talked about, whether they really want to actually talk about them or not. In our first demo podcast, I'm doing the Ford Bronco and how the success of the Ford Raptor brought it back. Now, as everybody knows, the Ford Bronco for the 2021 model year is modeled after its first generation predecessor in its design flaws and awesome looks. But had it not been for the 2009 Baja, that Ford Raptor finally coming through and beating and actually making it to the end, Ford would have had a sitting duck and they would have lost a bunch of money. So when Ford finally showed off the Ford F-150 Raptor in 2009, it was kind of a hit or miss because they were coming back from the recession. Nobody knows if this giant off-roading vehicle will actually appeal to the masses. It'll appeal to the enthusiasts and the adrenaline junkies, but it won't appeal to the masses until it's finally revealed. So they reveal it, they drive it straight to the Baja from its unveiling. It makes it, has a few problems, but it makes it. And then Ford launches the product and the Raptor actually sells very decently. People buy it, people buy it with the 5.4 liter engine to start off with. And they have an additional 6.2 liter engine for $3,000 extra in that first model year. Finally, they switch over to just having a 6.2 liter engine, which don't get me wrong, you can still get some decent horsepower from the 5.4 liter, but to actually work on that engine, which I've had an F-150 with the 5.4, just the normal train is, it's a disaster. It's, it's not one of Ford's finest products, but I digress. So, that makes a whole bunch of progress. They sell the first generation like hotcakes. The first generation even still retains most of its retail value. And if not, only losing a couple thousand dollars here and there over the years. They finally, in 2017, decided to go with the second generation. Put in a turbo V6. Now, from my uh, personal opinion, it probably... It makes great horsepower. It makes great torque. It's light. The body of that Coke looking truck is phenomenal. But I'm one of those older guys, if you want to call it, even though I'm a millennial. But I'm one of those guys that it don't have a V8. It, don't, it doesn't make that sound. It produces that power, but it does not make that sound that I'm looking for, that grumbling roar from a truck that I know when I see it coming up behind me with those orange lights and that giant growl that I'm like, okay, I'm going to move over in traffic. So the second generation continues to sell phenomenally. So Ford decides, well, our market shares are showing and our sales are showing that people actually want trucks again. They want a little bit larger vehicles because that's kind of the way the economy is shifting. They want, people want SUVs, people want crossovers, people want trucks. Now the F-150 never didn't sell bad. It just started to improve and show that people want a little bit, something more than just a normal sedan. So what they finally do to kind of break the ice after the second generation of the Raptor, they brought back in 2019 the F, correction, the Ford Ranger. But they gave it a I-4 engine, which again, makes great horsepower. And they're even sticking it in the 2021 Bronco. But to me, over the longevity of its Engine life, I feel, is not going to be sustainable. They may have done these crash tests with it. They may have done the long hauls with it. But for an everyday consumer, 
I do not feel it'll an I-4 makes it past 160, 170,000 miles, which with today's modern technology, cars are supposed to be going even longer than normal. And don't get me wrong, it makes great horsepower. For the way the generation has been going, a lot of manufacturers have been able to put out a lot more horsepower with a lot more smaller engines, and I commend them greatly on that. But when you're towing a max capacity of 7,500 pounds, even with the 4x4 as well as any additional features, that's still putting a lot of strain on a small engine. But continuing on with the success, they had the Rangers come out, they have the F-150s coming off the assembly line, being bought every other moment. So Ford finally decided, hey, let's get the sixth generation Bronco out. And finally, during this whole crazy time in 2020, they finally unveiled the Ford Bronco sixth generation. The two doors or four doors with a I-4 engine or the V6. One putting out 270, the other pushing out 310 in horsepower with some great torque numbers. Now me personally, if I was back in the States, I would be buying the V6 with four doors just because of my current situation for family as well as the V6 itself because while the manual is great and the seventh gear for crawling would be phenomenal. A lot of people are probably going to be using this for their everyday vehicle. Let's not get that mixed up. Not everybody can afford a second vehicle or have a nice weekend warrior Baja kind of vehicle to go rock crawling. So for an everyday luxury, do you really want to be doing a manual? Now there are some people dedicated, and me and myself included, that would could do a manual every day for work and go into the grocery store, but it's not the greatest cup of tea. Me, I would rather do the 10 speed automatic that I don't have to worry about, as well as the fact that I don't have to worry about teaching it on that vehicle to whoever needs to learn a manual. I can just get a crappy car and do it that way to teach my family and my friends that need to learn how to do ma manual driving. So with the Bronco, they finally made the orders, got some allocations and reservations done to fulfill future orders. They've done a couple of different trim levels. They did the first edition, and as of this podcast, they've increased it from 3500 to 7000 which has angered a lot of people. And to me, honestly, the Bronco is not going to be one of those pieces that is really, really valuable, even the first editions, 10, 20 years down the road. It may retain a little bit of its value, but it's not going to be one of those vehicles that, oh, I have the first edition four doors Bronco, one of the first ones off the assembly line. Unless you can keep like 300 miles on the thing and keep it constantly maintained in the next 10 years, you might just break even in my opinion because there's going to be so many Broncos on the road, especially with how many they've already made for reservations. And even if they lose half of those, when people get their refundable back, Ford's still going to sell a lot of Broncos. And with the amount of trim levels they have, the first edition only adds a few extra things from the factory. Not big things, but just a few things that makes it just a little bit different from the Wild Track. So to those people, I commend you for having the money to be able to buy the first edition, to have the first Broncos on the American roads, to have the power, the Sasquatch package, the luxury of luxuries. But it's just not going to be worth it. But I'm still super stoked. I cannot wait to see.